Fauci is not the disease, he is the symptom. And the disease is this huge, out of control, overly funded federal bureaucracy. Bye bye Fauci, bye bye. Good riddance. Let the door hit you on the new you know what on the way out. Hey everybody, I'm Steve Green with Bill Whittle and Scott Ott and this is Right Angle, brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. Uh, gentlemen, as I'm sure you heard, on Monday, celebrity medical spokesmodel Anthony Dr. Fauci announced he'd be resigning in December. So we got four more months of this uh, diminutive bureaucrat who uh, pretends to practice medicine now and then. Um, gentlemen, the send off he's getting from the left is probably about what you would expect. Uh, Steny Hoyer said Americans have come to know Dr. Anthony Fauci as a competent leader during the worst public health crisis in our lifetimes. Kamala Harris said uh, Dr. Fauci is an incredible public servant whose decades uh, of leadership in science and medicine saved countless lives across the world. Dan Rather. Yeah, he's still around. Dan said, Dr. Fauci, thank you for your service. Please ignore the haters. And former President Barack Obama said, I, of course, his statement started with that, will always be grateful that we had a once in a century public health leader to guide us through a once in a century pandemic. Few people have touched more lives than Dr. Fauci, and I'm glad he's not done yet. I suppose Obama didn't see the irony in that part of his statement. Um, Bill, talk about touching lives. If you are a uh, small business owner who lost their business during the unnecessary shutdowns, uh, somebody whose loved one died alone in a hospital because no one was allowed to see them, um, all the victims, not of the pandemic, but of the shutdowns and the bad decisions made on Fauci's unassailable faith-based science, um, would you be giving him such a fond send-off? I'd be giving him a font send off to prisons where I'd be giving him. There you go. Um, I think I think it's almost redundant to talk about the people that suffered as a result of his ever changing advice on this issue, all of which has been proven to be wrong in retrospect. Um, I think the bigger issue is this beyond question. This is not up for discussion. This is not a theory. Dr. Fauci was supporting the Wuhan uh Virology Institute using taxpayer dollars until finally he was advised that this is too dangerous, that we should not be doing this. This was under the Obama administration, by the way. So this is too risky. We're trying to find a way to make uh, viruses more infectious. So I want you to cut off the funding. So Fauci then found a private third party so that he could continue to fund uh, the Wuhan Virology uh, Institute. Um, this gain of function research is I, you know, there's sometimes when words just fall so far short that you just don't even want to utter them. It is exceedingly dangerous. All right. And, and the reason that, that I blame Fauci for this is because this may not sound like much, but everything about, everything else about him is in line with this. I saw, well, they had the movie about Fauci came out, right, Steve, six months ago or something, a documentary. Um, I knew that I knew that it was playing because of the line of people that were sleeping out on the sidewalk so they get the first tickets. Uh, but one um, percent on Rotten Tomatoes from audiences, by the way. OK, but in that in that documentary, there's a, a scene of Fauci in his own living room and he's working undoubtedly on how he's going to save millions more lives. And on the wall behind him is a gigantic and I mean, like four or five foot wide picture of himself a painting of himself in his own living room. And I thought that's a, rather a strange thing to have in your office where, where you're out there saving billions of lives. But Fauci represents, he represents the absolute essence of what is, of what is killing us today. And that is the idea that these elitists not only know, know everything about medicine, but they know everything about everything else too. And, and, and this kind of narcissism is exceedingly dangerous in, in idiots. When you, when you put that kind of narcissism in people who, who have the, the, the so-called credibility that this guy does, then you end up with, with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people dying or millions around the world. Now, Fauci has said not too long ago, uh, when asked about all the all the criticism he's getting because he funded this gain of re function research at the Wuhan uh, Institute of Virology, uh, 
He said, well, it doesn't really bother me because of the Fauci effect. The Fauci effect? Yes, this is Fauci speaking. Fauci said the Fauci effect is that people who would not otherwise have gone into science go into science out of admiration for him and his and his um, uh, astonishing uh, record of public service. And uh, you remember a couple months before that, he said, you can't be criticizing the science because I am the science. Yeah. Tony, science was invented because of people like you, not by people like you and not for people like you. Science was invented to correct the errors of people like you. That's what science is. Science is designed to remove the errors that come with arrogance, with, with pomposity, with assertions, with unprovable theories, with, with un, 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 verifiable facts. Science is there to, to eliminate the effect of people like you. You're not only not science, you're anti-science. You are the antithesis of science. And your arrogance, and you know this, and certain other members of Congress know this too, because I've seen that testimony. People can put two and two together. You can say that, well, we weren't funding, well, all we were doing is funding a way to make these viruses more, um, more uh, contagious. That's not gain of function research. Oh, no, no, no. I know what the word gain means and I know what function means and I know what research means. So you can go ahead and enjoy your time here now. Uh, but I'm telling you, there is no question that this is one of the, this is one of the worst people that have ever held public office in this country. And, and the fact that people are cheering him is an indication, Steve, Fauci is the default position for lazy people, right? He's the expert, and we know he's the expert because everybody told us he's the expert. He told, In fact, he told us he's the expert. He's the guy who said during the AIDS pandemic that you can catch AIDS by having a conversation with somebody who had AIDS. This is one of the many things he stated during the AIDS pandemic. All right, so this is the guy who we're lionizing here. This is the guy who we're, who we're idealizing. And when you look at... at at the damage this guy has done. He, I say he's the default position, the lazy position. He's the position for people who don't think. There are so many people who know nothing about this virus, know nothing about where it came from, nothing about how it was spread, but they will swear up and down that they are following the science because this is what Fauci said. They're not following the science. They're following the scientist. And this is the antithesis of what, of what science and medicine are supposed to be. Um, I like to think he's going to be... Uh, getting a, the humbling he deserves in this life. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I suspect it will in the next. Oh, we can hope, we can pray. We'll see what happens. Uh, Scott, just to put this very short and bluntly, isn't the problem the fact that one unelected bureaucrat has all this money and power? Yeah, I think that's that's part of the problem. And I question, you know, how much power was vested in that individual and how much in the agency and how much in the executive office of the president. And, you know, and frankly, most of the changes that happened to us were done at the local level based on recommendations that were made at the national level. And so our counties and cities were making decisions about uh, shutting things down and mask mandates and such. Um, and so the, the whole thing was a mess. I mean, my beef uh, largely with him just from his public appearance is that we suddenly saw bureaucracy as a performance art. Uh, like, like for some reason, we need to have this guy on our television on a daily basis. In my ideal world, were I president of the United States, you wouldn't even know his name. He would be one of my right counselors on. behind the scenes. He would be somebody that, uh, among others, that I would draw upon and say, "Okay, you've got years of experience. You've got some data here from your agency. What do you see? What do you see happening here?" And I, as the president, have to make those decisions. Uh, but I think the very act of putting a podium in front of somebody and a group of the media 
demands that there be something to say. And if you do this on a daily basis, you've got to say something new every day because the media quickly get bored if you say the same thing every day. And it's not enough to just regurgitate new statistics and say, okay, here's the latest update on how many people have died, how many people are sick and such. Uh, but you've got to look like you're doing something. And by speeding up the cycle of so-called science to match the cycle of the 24-7 news, you distort everything. And you wind up with bad counsel, bad performance art, and a bad response on the part of governments across the country who were seeing, well, this, just the fact that he was on TV on, on an almost daily basis said to everybody across the country, this is important, this is severe, we've got to do something. If you're not doing something about this right now, then you are missing the boat and you're jeopardizing lives because look, there's a doctor, he's on TV, he's on TV every single day. He's, he's talking for an hour to the media and they're running it live um, on these news channels. So I, I think that's part of the problem. He should have never been in that position. Nobody should have given him a podium like that. And by the fact that he has the, uh, as you, uh, you know, lampoon him, Steve, you know, a Anthony, Dr. Fauci, by the fact that he has that title, there's the imprimatur of credibility that falls to him as if, not only as if he were a medical doctor in daily practice, but as if he carried the consensus of the medical community inside of his suit jacket, that somehow he was conveying what all science and all the medical profession believed about it. It would have been much better to have a character like that if you had to have him at all. And frankly, how do you, how do you keep a job until you're 81 years old? I mean, how many people in the private sector are able to keep their high level position <laughs> <laughs> until they're 81 years old, they're forced out into retirement. You know, they're working part-time at Walmart, which is where he would have served the country better. <laughs> Steve, can I add one thing? Because Scott, Scott reminded me of something. You know, you, know, you know where else we've seen this kind of effect before? We saw it with Lance Ito on the on the um, oh, OJ Simpson OJ trial, trial, yeah, right. Where 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 once he became famous and, and he was on the news every single night, he be, he lost control of his case because he was more concerned about how he would look and how he came off and so on. So my advice would be to movie stars stop pretending like you're doctors, and my advice to doctors would be stop pretending that you're movie stars. Hmm. These two things are supposed to be separated by a wall. There's a wall dividing fame and and and, and uh, reliability, and you need to uh, respect this and, and just stop. Yeah, indeed. And, you know, why did Donald Trump not fire Fauci is the thousand dollar question to the Jeopardy category of political suicides. Um, just really, really, really bad. You know, uh, the day before the lockdowns, this is, I guess, uh, March of, uh, of 2020. I had to take my one of my kids in to see our uh, family practitioner. He said this cough that wouldn't go away. We weren't, worried, we weren't worried about COVID, but you know, he had this cough for a week. It was time to see the doctor. And we talked about COVID, of course. And what my doctor told me, and I think these are her exact words, she said, um, I'm hoping I catch it soon from a patient. I'll get it over with and my company will give me two weeks off. We should have put her in charge. Um, that said, uh, I'm not a doctor. I don't even play one on TV, but I know the difference between a uh, between the disease and the symptom. And Fauci is not the disease. He is the symptom. And the disease is this huge, out of control, overly funded federal bureaucracy. And we're going to get another Fauci, I guarantee you, where there's going to be another something and another Fauci. And the only way to stop it is for Congress to defund and eliminate that office entirely. Just lift it up root and branch. Either that or take off and nuke the entire site from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. And that's your right angle on that. Brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. Hey, a uh, quick thing. If you can hit the notification or the thumbs up, any of that stuff, it helps us stay on the air and helps us get these messages out to you. We sure appreciate it. It's good for you, too. So do it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.